In this video, I will introduce you a software called MNE. It's a Python-based open source software developed for analyzing human neurophysiological data. Mainly, uh, you can use this toolbox for analyzing MEG, EEG, SEG, and then ECOG, and many more uh, time series kind of data. The website provides a lot of tutorials. You can also go to this install page and then uh, install the software uh, depending on your operating system. So uh, for Linux users, you just run this. So you can see some. Let me try to open this. So it installs all the dependencies here. Okay pip basically you can also do pip mne well check out this website for more details uh, regarding uh, how how you can use this toolbox for analyzing your brain data or time series data tutorials some examples okay close source and examples should include this kind of uh, visualization um, okay pre-processing and some other very useful examples. I'm going to close and here I have my sp spider ID and some you know set of the codes uh, which I will go through. So um, so I installed a menu myself okay so of course the first step would be just to import it import a mini into your Python environment and I have a file uh, called ERP example um, this data corresponds to event related potentials data um, in particular the EEG data okay electroencephalographic data so mini provides us a module called IO which stands for input output so mne.io and depending on the type of the file you can use the functions of the methods that say provide so that you know allows you to load the data set in your directory into the, your environment so here for instance I have the row okay the object you know, MNE is object oriented, Python with everything that you are dealing is a Python object. Okay, so Python object usually is, uh, you know, in object oriented program we have this encapsulation, right? So every object has uh, methods, some attributes, some fields that, you know, uh, is encapsulated in the inside object. So let me just show you, okay? MNE input output. So it's a module that allows you to load, okay, import some other stuff. So if we open up this module, this module, we can go and see the constructor. So what do we have here? Mm, so we can see that this input output provides some methods. Um, that you can use that functions that you can use to read your EEG or MEG data from your local directory into the MNE environment. Okay, so <coughs> because you usually um, EEG is acquired from different systems, devices, therefore, so for instance, MNE shows us we need to have different uh, set of functions all right depending on the type of the hardware you use the acquire to collect your EEG or MEG data so add an example I can show here with MNE so dear function is the function you know that I like so depending on the hardware you can easily use read raw Artemis okay or read raw brain vision so read means okay import or read and raw means in raw data 
which has not been processed. So for instance, if I open up this brain, uh, brain vision device, EEG, then most likely, yeah, so yeah, brain vision uses these amplifiers, the amplifiers that look like this, to collect, you know, to record data from human brain. Well, what else do we have? So Art Artemis, this one. So if you look, yeah. So if you have a data that has been recorded using this kind of MEG system uh, that comes from Artemis, I mean, then you use this Retro Artemis. If you have a data collected by Brain Vision amplifiers, you use Retro Brain Vision. And also some other examples, redraw EEG lab. EEG lab and then also field trip um, are the other two very popular open source MATLAB based toolboxes. Field trip toolbox for analyzing um, brain data, MEG, EEG. To emphasize that field trip is also a very, very powerful, very useful toolbox that you can use for analyzing EEG MEG, okay? EEG lab, EEG lab, another one. So if you have data that you have analyzed initially using EEG lab or field trip and you want to, you know, load it in the MNE Python environment, then use epox EEG lab, epox field trip, these functions. Okay, or this read row EEG lab, read row field trip. So <coughs> in M and E, the so epochs means segmented data. Okay, each epoch correspond to one trial. So don't confuse this epochs with the terminology used in neural networks or deep learning. It's just epochs, just one example, one trial. Okay. So row means continuous data. Epoch means data. Again, EG Lab in as a toolbox. Segment. So I, I just read raw continuous data here. This is what I have now. Right? And then if we can also explore what this type of object is. So alright, okay. The type is a mini e IO fifth. Okay, FIF is some um, kind of convention or the file extension that MNE developers introduced. Okay, so you need to follow their convention. So, raw and then um, raw. Okay, let's try dear raw. Mm -hmm. So, let's ex uh, explore what we can do. I mean, this is Python object, so let's take a look at some properties such as these are hidden attributes that we don't need to bother and these are some other semi-private however we may want to take a look at these okay without these underscore stuff so look at these um, fields or the of the object for example well, append is used for appending the two different types of continuous data. Channel names provides information about channel names. Copy, okay, make a local copy of the raw data. Crop, you know, to crop your continuous data with the defined, predefined time segments. Filter, you can use this filter method to filter your raw data. And some some other okay, well you may want to also take a look at the visualization functionality. So the raw continuous data have the four different functions: just plot, plot project, uh, you know, po topo map project, pulse spectral density, pulse spectral density topography, and plot sensors, and some some other okay. So it provides some rich set of functions. All right, so <coughs> make sure, you know, you, I mean, depending on your need, usually the MEG data is quite heavy, 
Therefore, you may just, okay, the, the MNE IO module provides a two kind of um, loading. First, just link to the, the file in the directory. Don't load it into the memory. Second, so load it into the memory. So here we didn't load the data. It is referencing to the, the file in the directory. So if you want to load, okay, if you want to load the data, you need to set preload true. Preload true. Mm -hmm. Then your you have access so raw again. So now you, you may wonder where the original okay the the, the data is located. Usually, I mean, MNE is built on top of NumPy, so our data is a NumPy ND array in MNE. Okay, everything every data is ND array. So and to get our data, let's uh, call it X raw. Okay, raw get data will return numpy array. So x raw shape. We see that we have 64 channels, and this one second uh, dimension corresponds to the, the continuous uh, time series. So here. Well, la, 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 la. okay, no. All right. So now, if you want to do some um, some analysis outside the MNE, you just get your data from raw object raw dot get data, and then manipulate on your raw numpy array. Okay, or you can use MNE's own functions to analyze. Let's take a look at one simple example of how we can use excuse me, plot power spectral density function. Simple. Row that plot power spectral density gives us the power spectral density of each data okay, for all 60 channels. Okay, 63 channels. One more channel is uh, called uh, use for annotation so here so each different color line represents the PSD for each specific pulse spectral density channel so we should see here superimpose 63 channels all right here the frequency range and then the, the power spectral I mean the intensity power all right in decibels um, that's one example and if you want to plot the raw data we can use plot I mean raw dot plot so we can run it okay now what we will see here is that it's a uh, continuous again time series on this side of the figure which is a channel labels okay the labels of the channels for each one of the 63 channels and STI is basically the um, additional information that allows us to provide some uh, annotation across time series so for instance time 1 time 2 time 3 and others Okay, so let me do some more stuff. Um, so you can select, you can also, you know, um, explore some other functions. So, I mean, wha what, I mean, uh, some, some key or keyboards, shortcuts to interact. So, so zoom in, zoom out. And again, this response to time samples, okay? All right, so yeah.
So, you know, that's one of the example. And now, another module called okay, MNE preprocessing. So, MNE preprocessing um, allows us to use some functions that can be useful to clean noise artifacts in EEG data. Uh, EEG data is very noisy, as you know. Okay, so one of the examples of the noise is uh, related to eye movement artifacts, eye movement or eye blink artifacts. For instance, look at these abnormal uh, increasing, uh, you know, um, uh, increasing amplitude values of EEG. These are not normal EEG data, so we need to. For instance, these ones, okay? These are probably the jaw movements or also some strong eye movements, heartbeat artifacts. There are so many different types of artifacts in EEG data. Okay, so for in, yeah, these ones. We want to get rid of these, right? Before uh, analyzing our data, these ones, for instance. Well, there are a lot of uh, methods, techniques that has been de developed so far in both EEG and MEG field. One of them is called ICA, so Independent Component Analysis. So I'm not going to explain you the theoretical formulation or you know, motivation behind ICA, but just um, the ICA is a technique that you know is based on. Uh, um, factor analysis, okay, so it decomposes your data into independent components uh, based on some basic uh, some assumptions and then tries to separate noise from true EEG, from true brain data. So let's try to decompose data into 20 different ICA components. Okay, just I just want to use this for demonstrative purpose. Um, we can, yeah. Uh, once we instantiate the object, this is now our ICA object, Python object. Okay, ICA. Um, we can see some documentation. All right, and then. Uh, just like you know, if you are familiar with scikit learn environment, uh, MNE also tries to follow the same you know method. Like every object has that fit, okay? Fit ICA decompose ICA uh, on the copy of our raw object after applying bandpass filter. Okay, so. We did that. We can now try to plot ICA components. Here. So the data has been decomposed into uh, uh, 20 different ICA components. And in this, you know, ICA analysis requires some human intervention. So this part of the okay analysis may require some domain expertise well you should be very comfortable interpreting this uh, so-called topographic mapping of EEG and the task here is to identify some outliers some uh, abnormal non-brain data-like patterns for instance probably this one is outside the scalp probably this could correspond to um, eye movement, non-brain activity, non another one. Well, okay, here also, I don't like this one. Uh, also, this one could correspond to eye blink, but again, this requires your domain expertise, experience in reading uh, EEG topography. Or, okay, and then, yes, so you can decide manually 
to exclude those components than to reconstruct our EG data after cleaning. Or you can uh, use um, ICA's method, automatic, I mean, threshold based, based uh, that last, I mean, that tries to identify EOG, electrocalogram, eye movement activity, based on some um, channels located in the front here. Channel name, okay, usually channel name is the name of the channel to use for EOG peak detection. So you can use um, channels located in the uh, anterior frontal cortex. So anterior frontal lobe, not cortex. So if you do that, so bad ID channels. Okay, probably these ones. Let me just uh, plot it again. So this um, the method says that twelve is bad. Nine, okay, is not good. Is not easy. It's artifact. Sixteen and seven. Where is seven? Seven. Seven. Well, I don't know about this, but. And also, the, this threshold again subjective. Mm -hmm. Default is three, but I'm here trying to be a very conservative. Just exclude raw plot again, these ones. Um, now I want to apply ICA to clean the data. Mm -hmm. and then get another data, I mean, clean data. So now those patterns are gone. See? Okay. Another method that MNE provides for us is called find events. So events here corresponds to some trigger information, some label information that has been collected along with EEG during the experimental paradigm. So, for instance, events, events. Here, so in this uh, raw data, since we are dealing with ERP type of data, there are two conditions: target and non-target ERPs, event-related potentials. And uh, the ratio between target and non-target usually 80 to 20, right? So non-target uh, events appear more frequently than the target. So, um, and then the people collected this data decided to give these. Uh, 100, 200 kind of labels to denote, okay, this one 100 corresponds to target, non-target non corresponds to 200. Those are time markers, okay, event markers. Okay, for instance, first non-target, 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 and then target appears. Okay, based on this information, we can segment the raw data set into epochs, into the segmented trials. All right, so that's an example again. We are just visualizing the hundred of them. Now, given raw data, the next step is uh, okay. So I can also visualize here so events, time, at what time non-target happened, non-target, 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 and then here target. Okay. And this is the onset of the visual stimuli that shows the target. Okay, so we, we just need these two for the time being. Mm -hmm. And then we create event IDs and pass uh, events 
okay, event subject numpy, this array um, to epochs event IDs we can give them as as we want. We can call it standard or non-target and then this one we can call it as target. And how many epochs is a, of, is a function that allows you to segment your raw data. Okay? It's just basically segment, you know, it allows us to segment the data. So we can take a look at the, the documentation. So MNE, epochs, raw data, events, event ID, and we may also uh, provide the window links around the events. So by default it is minus 200 plus 500 milliseconds around these times. Okay. So and some some other. So if you just do this, event ID, and then if you run this, we're we're going to get another object <coughs> called epochs from raw. So now, as you can expect, epochs is a segmented data. Okay, raw is continuous. Epochs segmented. So we can also notice here, raw, okay, has just continuous data, but epochs results in two different um, conditions segmented around. So we have 900 three events okay 903 uh, three events means 903 um, okay data trials and then if you want to get the data related to this target we just treat it as a you know, as a dictionary this object and then obtain target and the numpy array is located here okay so you can download so if in the raw case we had uh, Okay, so in the raw case we had 64 channels, this continues, but after segmentation we have um, three dimensional numpy array. So the first dimension corresponds to number of epochs, number of trials. And then second one corresponds to 64 channels and time. Alright, so if you want to get the first one for epoch then we'll have our 64 channels and segment okay x this is our data set from the one segment Yeah, we can also visualize epochs, the segmented trials, using the same function. So epochs are plot. So in continuous case, um, we had continuous without these dash lines, but in this case we have uh, every window corresponds to one observation, one trial, one epoch. So the on, I mean the time point um, that uh, the target and target stimulus appeared is shown by this line okay here and 200 millisecond means pre you know before the onset of the stimuli and then 500 millisecond so uh, this range is used user defined depending on what you want I mean what you're looking for and what your question is and by the way so here 200 200 200 and then 100 
non-target events and one target another non-target one target okay so you can use these numbers as labels to denote target okay non-target non-target target all right let's um, apply what is it what does it say okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so <coughs> again you can extract target and non-target related events so we can also visualize the channels the epochs target I mean here plot sensors so we see here 63 channels but they are labels so that means you know the data has been collected by using 64 channels I mean 63 channels on these locations um, this one is right here left here and then nose visualize epochs mm -hmm. so here so we can uh, you know uh, visualize some data um, <coughs> using this function so what we see here is that uh, we can treat it as a heat map or color coded representation of each trial from one selected channel, CZ. Okay, just one line here represents um, the CZ data from trial one. Uh, trial, okay, end of the trial first. And here we see the average across all this. See, and we see some, okay, the location channels are okay here. And we see some P300 uh, positive deflection of EEG around 300 milliseconds and this the dash line again represents the time when the visual cue has been shown so we have segmented data 200 milliseconds pre okay uh, and then 500 milliseconds post the stimuli onset or when the stimuli happened so you can define this you know uh, differently segmentation so we can also um, not visualize only data from CZ. This one is CZ. Let's take a look at FP1. Let's take a look at this channel. FP1. Okay. This is the data from FP1, and the location is shown by dot nose right left ear okay and some some other functionalities um, okay so E is object plot image top mat pulse speckle density let me just plot PSD uh, PSD of segmented data right okay this one let me close this one another one raw data uh, okay so what we have done so we loaded the data in the many performed uh, ICA based uh, data cleaning so far and the the, the 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 last step was segmentation using M N epoch and then we applied ICA on epoch data and excluded by bad um, components ICA info and um, all right so here we can just perform some baseline correction etc but not needed now uh, and then plot sensor visualized and okay since we have 
unbalanced event so number of 200 is much higher than 100 uh, we can use, use this epochs equalize event counts just to make it balanced mm -hmm. so this you know this um, uh, drops like uh, 691 epochs so now we have same number of classes observation for both from target non-target okay and then finally let's save our data epochs.save we can give the name epo erp epo and then um, so let's create another segmented data but with longer time window t mean well initially we did this 200 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds but let's do segmentation one more time with longer window okay mm -hmm. apply CA equalize event counts and then save it well we'll be using this uh, longer uh, epoch for time frequency analysis later so now look epochs for time frequency analysis and then epochs so this information shows the duration of each segment each epoch so 500 milliseconds pre and post the stimuli 200 milliseconds pre and then post okay so we can visually um, let's compare these two I'm going to plot this one okay and then plot this epoch we have here two figures I'm not sure if this is useful but just uh, visually I just want to show you that um, they, they come from the same data only the duration is different same channel same trial same data here the window length is in total 700 but here window length is two seconds all right same data and if you want to do again something outside time mini you call it x epochs get data now x is your numpy array <coughs> Set. So let me go to the to the next uh, script here. Um, here, I mean, um, I will show you some examples of the visualization. Okay, how you can visualize uh, ERP data. So ERP. Uh, dash epo.fif is a file that we have saved okay right here we load the continuous segmented clean using ICA and load. and then I'm going to load it import it into MNE again so here this is um, the, the name of the file we have saved erp um, hyphen epo.fif <coughs> For epochs, MNE provides I mean, a shortcut. Um, MNE dot read epochs will allow you to read MNE objects, segmented epochs. Epochs now is the uh, balanced I mean, uh, epochs and the number of target and target same. <coughs> yeah, so let's you know get the target perform averaging and see target 
So target is an averaged um, epoch from 106 different epochs, okay, here, from 106 different epochs. Um, target, so shape, for, I mean, uh, get data. Oh, yeah, it is already uh, evoked array. Dear target. Okay. I like this function called dear. Allows you to data. Mm -hmm. So the target data. What? Ah. Oh, Okay, so target data is the location of your number array and has the following shape. Then do same averaging and let's try to perform some joint plotting. What you see here is that the joint plot between average ERP, event relative potentials, and then topo, top, topo map. Here, for instance, so um, the visualization functions provided by many is very, very uh, interactive, as you can see. Yeah, so the peak is somewhere here, and then we can s parietal low has some increased activity, mm -hmm. while here we don't see much. Define the time segments of joint plot here. Okay, this is another function is plot image, plot image, or plot image allows us um, to generate heat map or color coded representation of amplitude values from that average data. From uh, here, we see the averaging between, I mean, all target and target. Well, this red increase sample to say something, so you know, depending on your question, research question, you can conclude. And what else we can do? Yeah, we can also visualize um, the ERP distribution in this um, kind of plot. Okay, so these are all you know the, the channels, and then we see some some increase in amplitude. Another, you know, way to take a look at the data. CZ, okay, here. Um, F, P1, here. Uh, PO10, here. And SO2, SO1, uh, corresponds to, not EG, but four sensors that record that electrocologram eye movement. And this um, kind of sensors, people put two electrodes to record eye movement activities by placing sensors, something like this. Okay, and we use those data to detect eye movement related uh, artifacts. So, for instance, here two more electrodes, in addition to, or you know, depending on your settings, but. But these two, we have only two ones, and then SO2 we use for identifying bad ICA components. So we can also plot, visualize based on the region of interest. So RO usually stands for region of interest. Okay, and many make channel and midline, just you know, get the midline, and then get the um, okay, left right midline we see here um, we are just grouping channel by the region of our interest in this specific case right hemisphere left hemisphere and then midline all the midline here 
so right hemisphere left hemisphere and then all the mid line okay as you can see here we can just uh, define the region of interspace visualization now let's see book group by Royce region of interest mm -hmm. so left hemisphere midline all the uh, central channels and then we have the last one is right hemisphere okay so well I mean uh, these of uh, you know red increased activity say something about your experimental paradigm usually when you do some science experiments you have some hypothesis um, and then to verify that hypothesis you you perform some experiment based on your you know device protocol collect data analyze it and then try to interpret your analysis to verify your hypothesis anyway so depending on your research question this could be very very vital information okay we'll show another functionality dot compare evoked okay so this function basically you take one channel and compare target and target now okay that, those are the functions that you can use cloud evoke topa and many, uh, many others and uh, you know uh, why do you may want to use this so first again to check your hypothesis second to prepare very nice publication quality figures all right so figures I mean, figures to put into a paper so now, uh, if you remember, let's say we saved uh, the data with long duration. So let's uh, perform some time frequency analysis. First, we need to load it. And then let's try to plot a power spectral density for this data set between 2 Hz and 20 Hz. See? So here we see some, some bump increased, some activities around 8 and 12. You can also define these like 40 Hz. I want to see 40 Hz between 2 and 40. Then you should see some like this. I'm going to uh, import a time frequency analysis method called uh, more late, more let uh, wavelet transformation. So a many time frequency module provides some some interesting functions. Okay, let's. Uh, useful for performing time frequency analysis. One of them is time frequency model at oil at decomposition. So, so we define frequency range. We want to perform a model at uh, wavelet transformation between 3 and 30 hertz. Uh, we do this for target, non target, okay, and passive frequency. Now we have um, this object. average time frequency so use your magic I mean tier I mean dear target to see you know what you can do the so data is located here okay it should be 3d array Yeah, so after performing time frequency, this is the result of our wavelet transformation. Here we have time and then frequency between 3 to 30. And we can see that some increased activity around this area mm, in, in EEG, and then we can visualize topo map. Or we can just do this. Yeah, something like this should be interesting. Or something like this. Okay, I, I think another artifact, something like this. Or we can select one.
one channel and visualize time frequency I mean I wanted to show you how to perform simple predictions well in this script I'm going to show you how to get the data okay that we have segmented perform some basic very simple machine learning uh, just logic regression uh, so we read the data and get the uh, event IDs can we predict trial type from each activity for that we can use uh, so I mean scikit-learn library some you know uh, normalization make pipeline and perform some model selection using cross-validation perform some logic regression so we import logic regression from scikit-learn linear model, logic regression and supervised learning uh, algorithm that you can use for, uh, you know, for classification problems. So now here comes the fullness of get data. So only pick types EEG true means we, we are just uh, getting EEG data. So X now is our numpy array which i have been telling you how to get it epochs get numpy array y's okay in supervised learning we need to train data and then corresponding labels so we're generating y's okay based on the events and we're calling okay one event as plus the other one as minus one shape of the uh, our data Okay, X shape. We have two hundred twelve training examples. Half of them target, half of them non-target. Sixty-three channels. Set EEG type true means we only want to pick EEG channels. Seventy-one corresponds to time points. Okay. I mean he has his uh, decoding module with useful functions again and then uh, the vectorizer will transform your n-dimensional array into 2D array of number of samples by number of features so x here is 3D array right? but scikit-learn requires us to have number of samples by number of features so it requires numpy with 2d array so many provides this vectorizer is basically very simple takes 3d array converts into 2d array by number of samples number of samples and number of features so you can also do it yourself so let's uh, instantiate classifier object make pipeline basically uh, creates a chain of the steps chain of the steps that is done on your uh, input vectorizer convert into samples by features standard scalar is just a normalization um, and then our logistic regression classifier with the, the following solver instantiated so CLF is our classifier Simply, next surprising step is just CLF fit, fit, okay, super fast. You pass your input data and then Y, corresponding labels, CLF means um, this is our class file. When once we train our logistic regression, we can test it on some unseen examples. One of the things that I just um, want to mention here is that we didn't allocate or hold, I mean, uh, allocate a data set for validation of test. Okay, so usually you split your training data into train, validation, and then test, and perform uh, cross validation. So you have uh, your class firearms ready, you can predict on some totally unseen examples here we're using not using unseen examples but it's uh, the one that we have used for training cross validation score allows us to perform cross validation TV 
5 means 5 fold cross validation, 10 means 10 fold cross validation. So, yeah, here cross validation score for each fold. First fold, second fold, third, fourth, fifth, and tenths. 10 fold for each fold. So once you have uh, ERP date set segmented, you may want to apply some, some machine learning depending on your need, whether there is some discriminable pattern between target and non-target events. Okay, that's it for today. Take care. See you around.